students are to install this new boiler in the little school subject to some of the comments that were made at town meeting it's going to be uh, the type of uh, boiler that will be um, fully G fully energy efficient and we're working very carefully to ensure that we do the right thing we have a consultant we're working with and uh, that's a plan for the summer the third thing that the administration would like the school committee to consider this evening is the replacement of our special education van that had been on the docket for springtown meeting but cash flow issues uh, prevented uh, the selectmen and the finance committee from approving that and offering that out of town meeting and there was commentary at that time let's wait until october in hopes that some free cash might be available to replace this this is a 1995 uh, van that we use um, we've been uh, using um, a, a one of our employees vehicles uh, during the spring uh, and will be in the fall and, and paying mileage because we do need uh, use of this van. Um, it's a $35,000 investment. However, um, in the long run, if we were forced to contract this service out, you'd be spending almost that in the first year alone. So it's a good investment and it replaces a vehicle that we uh, gets difficult, you know, any vehicle that drives around town has exhaust problems and, you know, it's not the, um, best way to manage a vehicle uh, given the, the short, st short stop and start that we use. But we have had <coughs> 15 years out of this. So we uh, asked the school committee to uh, consider this and wonder if you have any questions. No, Kyle, you, so you're suggesting that we consider the uh, vehicle, the van, in the warrant article for capital improvements in the October town meetings, is that what you're Yes, saying? October. Okay. All right. The town yet hasn't given us a deadline or calendar deadline on when these are available, but we wanted we weren't sure of what the school committee. Okay. Well, the next item in the agenda is the is capital. Um, Thanks. Back capital back projects for uh, fiscal year ahead. 2012. Yeah. So why don't we just segue into that? Okay. And, unless there's any questions on the other projects, okay? So the, the next is, uh, and again, it's something we do every year. Um, the capital improvement request, as Kyle said, the uh, technology and the boiler were approved at the June town meeting. However, the um, the sped van was not, and uh, I think that sounds like Kyle's top priority or Kathy's top priority. Uh, for the October town meeting. Yeah. So I think if we look at the list that we have in front of us of uh, capital projects, I went through them quickly myself, and if you look at um, e even moving into uh, next year, there's the vast majority of the uh, projects are um, related to the middle school and the high school. And I think on most, if not all of those, we're probably gonna wait uh, based on the project. One, the one, ur one urgent one, I think, is more urgent than fiscal year 13 is the batch parking. Um, maybe not getting the money, but I'd like, I mean, do we need money to institute a study of where we can find parking? Can our staff do that and find the potential? Bec because I think that's an urgent issue. I think it's a, personally think it's a serious traffic issue. I've driven up there when there are cars parked all along that fence and there really isn't enough room for the cars to get by both ways in some, especially when the high school's getting out. I think that that's something we need to address before 2013. How about any other priorities, Kyle or Kathy, that uh, beyond the van for October? Well, I, if, if, do you want to, I, I had a quick response to Mel. I, I sure would think that uh, a parking lot at the Batchelder School is worthy of, of consideration. Um, the school administration is trying to be really conservative with its warrant requests now, given what's ahead. And there's been a lot of debate about, the, about whether we should include that batch parking lot mm -hmm. um, in the mix, knowing that it's not only a financial issue, but it's a political issue, given the fact that that is on in historic district commission property. Don't remind me. <laughs> um, but I, I think we could make a very good case for the inclusion of that. I don't have a dollar figure. But we could make a very good case for the need for that, but want to take um, uh, into consideration how the school committee feels about the timing of such a project. Yeah, I'm not saying for October. I'm saying I put it on <coughs> for next um, next June. So would that make it something fiscal to be done 2013? in fiscal 2013? Yeah, it would. It would make it fiscal 2013. I guess, uh, uh, but I'd like to get started earlier in terms of yeah, finding. <coughs> Like, so I don't know if we need the money now, but I would like to start the oh, process I, I sooner. 
We have, we would work with uh, the town engineer and Wayne and other town officials. I, I believe that we could site a parking lot, estimate the cost of that parking lot, in fact, also have the town DPW construct that parking lot should it be approved. So I don't think there's any planning m money needed for that. Okay. It's more of a planning process. I, I agree with Mel. If the administration thinks it's a priority, I think maybe we wait until June right. uh, to come forward with this. And we go with the van now. Is there anything else that you feel that we need to go forward with in October? The walkway we deferred to FY13. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. And that's the Hood School walkway that we're going to wait on then. All right. Um, I think we need a vote to submit this um, to. Where, where, yeah. are the, where is the faculty parking now? At the 40. Well, it's tight. Short. It's tight. And we always know it was going to be but tight. But this statement um, says that they're, they're 40 spots short right now. <coughs> Again, there's, there's, su there's sufficient spots for most of the employees. It's difficult if anybody else is coming in. I think a lot of them park along the roadway there. I think Sean has actually said at the last meeting they, they are now, they have more Shuttling staff too. than yeah. parking spaces. They, uh, Michael, the, some of them park <coughs> in the high, at the high school and walk over. They park illegally along the, uh, the roadway, the roadway uh, senior housing, uh, <coughs> library. Sometimes over at the meeting place, which is really a no-no. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. the, we've heard about that too. Read letters to the editor about yeah. that. Yeah. Have you been chased out of there? Have I been chased out of there? I'm not up there as often as you. I get chased out of there, and I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not up there as often as you. Um, <laughs> we need to move on a vote. Just so we're going to move on a vote for to include uh, on the town meeting warrant, and again, this is going to be more or less up to the selectmen as to what they include and don't include. But the uh, replacement of the 95 sped van, uh, is 35,000 okay to include in that? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll make a motion to um, put the, or to request that the selectman place an article for a $35,000 for replacement of a 1995 sped van on the October town meeting warrant. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Webster, a second by Mr. Bowers. Any further discussion? Carrying none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries by a vote of five to nothing. Next up on the agenda is the Mass Executive Institute report that I believe the superintendent uh, attended that from July 12th to July 15th in Mashpee, Massachusetts. That is correct. And she's going to give us a report on that. Very quick report, I promise. But it was, um, it was a very good conference. The theme of the conference was Mastering the Skills of Leadership. We had several keynote speakers. We were scheduled to have one... Um, but he needed to back out due to medical issues. So our stand-in on very quick notice was um, David Gergen, who's the former presidential advisor, senior policy analyst, professor, professor of public service at the Kennedy School of Government, and popular television commentator. And so he was our stand-in keynote speaker. And he spoke about uh, the current economic crisis across the world. And uh, very briefly, he talked about three economic social issues that will influence our recovery in the, in the United States. And he felt that we need to get the economy moving now. Um, and this debate that's taking place um, in the Capitol needs to be resolved very quickly. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves in similar situations as those of European countries, particularly Greece. Um, and so he talked about the need to cut spending as well as raise taxes. I'll move right along after that. The <laughs> second issue that was is more uh, perplexing was to create more middle class jobs. It's not just an issue of recession. It happened during the Bush years. The job mach machine slowed down, but in the last um, since the last ten, in the last ten years, there's been net zero new jobs since 2000. The gross domestic pro product product is almost back with seven million less jobs. Many employers are getting the same results with less people because they're hiring part-time, so there are no medical costs and pensions. And there are many more part-time jobs paying approximately $19,000 a year. So we've essentially wiped out the middle class in this country. Um, and that's what he was talking about. The third issue that he was talking about was the growing social issues in this country and in the world, reflecting that um, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And there are the inequities between the haves and have-nots are growing. So that's just very quick.
quick information. Um, he talked about the, the quality of education needing to um, improve. We must start st solving the economic problem by developing a civic and a civil culture in our society. And he talked about the responsibility of education to do that. Um, he was asked if we had to come up with the three um, takeaways for improving education to make us more competitive on the global playing field. He said there are three things we need to do. Develop a sense of curiosity so that we have independent learners. Um, make sure that we promote global education. Be very good at something and very connected to other fields. Um, and he also talked about becoming adaptable. We need to be able to teach children how to take the hard knocks in life. They need to fail in order to know how to be resilient. And he quoted Harry Truman at the end, not every reader is a leader, but every leader is a reader. So that was um, one keynote speaker. And he was quite interesting. I was listening to him for about an hour and a half, and, and he was um, engaging. The second keynote speaker, her name is Liz City. She is one of two authors of the book Strategy in Action. I can tell you that this falls under um, educational leadership on my evaluation, so I'm talking about it now. Um, I'm going to keep doing that so that I help. <laughs> I help. <laughs> let, me, let me make a note. Understand <laughs> what we're writing that down right now. Educational leadership. Okay. Um, anyway, last year our administrative council read this book, Strategy in Action, and it was written by Rachel Curtis and Elizabeth City. Eliz Elizabeth City came and spoke to the superintendents. This book was widely read across this state this year. All schools in level four needs improvement category and level three read the book as part of a requirement under uh, the ed reform but we decided to take a look at it from the perspective of what's in this book that will help us be strategic about improvement planning so we read this book it's also been purchased for it was purchased for our assistant principals as well as our um, assistant director of PPS and our new principal at the middle school tomorrow the 19th and Wednesday the 20th I will be facilitating a retreat for those administrators on how we operationalize the concepts in strategy and action. So um, it should be quite interesting, but I was very happy to hear Liz City talk about the essential knowledge and understandings in the book that she helped to co-author, and it validated some of the points that I want to pull forward in our administrative retreat in the next two days. I would really like her to come and facilitate, but she wasn't available and she's very expensive. Be that as it may, I am prepared and ready to move forward with our administrative council. Instead of doing a strategic plan, we are going to be strategic about our planning regarding improving operations as well as improvement in, in student achievement. So I will be keeping you posted um, at various school committee meetings across this year to let you know how we have operationalized the concepts in this book and how it relates to the information that I've gathered through the entry plan last year where I identified some areas of next steps for improvement as well. So we'll be pulling it all together and I'll, I'll bring this all back to you. We also had a wonderful panel discussion about the new statewide evaluation framework for teachers and administrators. The current Associate Deputy Commissioner, Carla brooks Bear, who has announced her retirement, and we are all very chagrined about this, um, as well as the Commissioner, Kathleen Skinner from the MTA, and the MASS attorney, Mike Long, were four members of this panel discussion to talk about what districts are going to need to deal with in the coming days. That's heavy there, right there. <laughs> very heavy, but very interesting. I have five pages of notes, but it was an excellent presentation. Uh, another very important uh, workshop that I went to was the MASS Executive Institute Legal Update, and the four focus areas for the various cases that were reviewed had to do with school district regulation of teacher social networking. This is something that the policy subcommittee and I will be having a discussion about in the very near future. They talked about education, educator certification cases, uh, staff non-renewal issues, and other quicksand cases that were out there that had been resolved. And finally, there was also a wonderful presentation by Mass Teacher Retirement System about any changes to regulations for anyone working in the field of education. There were other smaller workshops I'm not going to go into, but it was a very busy conference. I, I do enjoy going. Any questions of the superintendent? Anything at all? Well, thank you very much for that report. Thanks. You're welcome.
Okay, we're down to uh, routine matters. The bills and payrolls, I believe, have been signed. We have three signatures on all those. We have minutes, all from June 27th. The open